This video series is proudly sponsored by RS Grassroots Education. You can refer to the Design Spark article link below to find out more materials related to this video. Hey, what is up guys? In this video, we're going to shift gears and talk about an exciting prospect in the photovoltaic industry, and that is called perovskites. Perovskite is a calcium titanate with the chemical formula CaTiO3. This is a mineral discovered in 1839 by a German mineralogist called Gustav Rose. He named this material perovskite after the Russian mineralogist Lev Perovskite. If we look closely at the crystal structure of perovskites, we find that the titanium oxide forms an octohedral structure. In parallel, the calcium and titanium form a body-centered cubic geometry. So if we combine them, we have a perovskite structure. Since then, perovskite is defined by any material with the same chemical structure and formula as calcium titanate. Perovskites adopt an ABX3 structure. A is usually an organic cation like methyl ammonium or formamidinium. It can also come from an inorganic cation, like cesium. B is almost always lead, and X is usually a halide, like iodide, chloride, or bromide. Almost all perovskites consist of lead and halide. This is why we call them lead halide perovskites. The entire chemical structure then looks something like this. The development of perovskites into perovskite solar cells is actually quite interesting. The first ever lead halide perovskite is reported in 1892. These perovskites are cesium based. It was not until 2009 that Tom Miyasaka and colleagues first use perovskites for photovoltaics applications. They use methyl ammonium lead bromide and methyl ammonium lead triiodide separately as a light absorber, aka sensitizer, by coating them onto titania nanoparticles. Electron hole pairs are generated in the perovskite. They get separated at the perovskite titania interface. Electrons travel through the titania and into the electron transport layer, and then the anode. Holes travel through a liquid electrolyte hole transport layer into the cathode. This solar cell yielded an efficiency of 3.8%. However, it can only last for a few minutes because the perovskite easily dissolves into the electrolyte solution. In 2012, Professor Henry Snave from the University of Oxford worked with Tom Miyasaka to develop a similar perovskite-based solar cell. However, they use a solid-state spiral omitat instead of the electrolyte solution as the whole transport layer. This immediately solves the issue of perovskite dissolving into the electrolyte solution, exhibiting an efficiency of 7.6%. Titania has a lower conduction and valence band than perovskite, so it makes sense that titania acts as the antimaterial to accept electrons from the perovskite, which acts as the p-type absorber However, when the research team tried to replace titanium 
with alumina, which is practically an insulator, they instead observe an increased efficiency until 10.9%. This doesn't make sense at all. The electron generated in the perovskite cannot be transferred to alumina due to its higher conduction band, and hence electron hole pairs cannot be separated. So why do they have a higher efficiency? Now, this can only mean one thing. The team suspected that the electron and hole pairs are not just generated, but also separated in the perovskite itself. The perovskite does not act as a p-type or n-type material, but rather an intrinsic material. Perovskite is itself both a good absorber and conductor. This exciting discovery started a whole new field of perovskite solar cells. Professor's name's research group immediately went on to experiment on this idea. And in 2013, the group successfully synthesized the first ever perovskite solar cell. A perovskite solar cell consists of a perovskite sandwiched between a P and N type layer to extract the holes and electrons, respectively. This solar cell exhibited a staggering efficiency of 15%. It is obvious to us from this progress that perovskites are indeed a high prospect material for solar cells. Within less than a decade, its NREL certified efficiency managed to increase from 12% in 2013 to 25.5% in 2021. This is about 1.7% increase per year. Compared to crystalline silicon cells, it takes about 40 years to increase its efficiency from 14% to 26.1%, about 0.3% increase per year. Apart from perovskite being a super material for solar cells, this unprecedented increase in efficiency is also due to the fact that we know much more about the physics behind solar cells now compared to before, making improvements easier and faster Today, the record efficiency of perovskite is already comparable to crystalline silicon. We know that silicon solar cells have a long-standing reputation and huge market capitalization. Hence, it is almost impossible for perovskites to immediately replace silicon cells overnight. This is why efforts today focus on integrating perovskite solar cells with silicon instead of replacing or competing with them. This involves developing a perovskite silicon tandem, or what we call a multi-junction solar cell. A high bandgap perovskite layer is deposited on top of a low bandgap silicon layer. The current record cell efficiency for tandem perovskite is at 29.5%, way past the single junction crystalline silicon record efficiency. The aim is to scale them up to megawatts and gigawatt levels and commercialize them, anxiously anticipating the first ever commercialization of perovskite solar cells. That's it, guys, for chapter 10.0. Now that we heard the story of perovskite solar cells, in the next video, we will go a bit more detail to talk about how do we improve perovskites to accelerate commercialization. Take care and goodbye.